going on, Friday the 13th fans? It's time to rank the Friday the 13th final girls. I've already ranked the Jason looks, the third, the final chases. I've ranked the Jason faces underneath the mask. I've ranked the top 13 kills. I've ranked the franchise. So if you haven't seen those videos, check those out uh, after this, of course. Or just pause this, go watch those, and then come here. Whatever you want to do, but yeah, check out all those rankings. And I got one more ranking. After this one, I will be ranking the Jason actors, the people behind the mask. So, now let's talk about the 11 final girls I got here. I'm not including the final girl in Freddy vs. Jason because... Uh, she never really fights against Jason at all. It's, she's being attacked by Freddy Krueger for the most part in that entire movie. So she's not really a Friday the 13th final girl. Now the criteria for this ranking, the things that I'm looking at when putting this list together, which has been changing the more I look at it, but I'm going to finalize it now. This is how it is right now. This is how it stands as of today. Um, the more I look at it, if I put more thought into it, I'm sure something will change. But this is it, all right? This is, I'm finalizing it. But my criteria here, the things I'm looking at, is the personality, how much they fight back, their bravery, and, you know, decision making, stuff like that. Their acting, it's all that put together. And how gorgeous they are, you know. It doesn't hurt to be a beautiful final girl, so, <laughs> but that's not important. So, number 11, who is my least favorite final girl out of this whole huge franchise number 11 is Rennie from Friday the 13th part 8 because I just can't stand her stupid visions and I it so forced her history with Jason it makes no sense she really has not much of a personality here the only thing I know about her is that she has this stupid history with Jason she keeps having these stupid visions I keep saying stupid but they're so stupid all those visions of Jason, they're so idiotic. I hate them. I hate this final girl because of those stupid dreams. It feels like something out of a Nightmare on Elm Street movie of all the purple fog coming out of that mirror. And she gets that one t-shirt killed and doesn't even bat an eye. She never like sheds a tear for her. That was like her favorite t-shirt. She just got her killed. Whatever. I don't like this final girl. All right. She ends up getting like raped and helped by Jason. I don't care for her love interest in this movie, their relationship, him just giving her a necklace and her acting like it's the best damn gift in the whole world. The only thing she does to fight back against Jason in this movie is throw a bucket of toxic waste in his face that's just conveniently lying around for her to throw. Outside of that, she does nothing to fight back. There's no smart decision making that I saw on her part. She's just constantly running and running and running. So, Rennie... Number 11, this is where you will stay. Number 10 will go to Jessica from Jason Goes to Hell. This is the niece of Jason, and she doesn't really get to do much because Jason's too busy, like, killing all these other people. They finally meet towards the end, and she just stabs him with this, like, dagger from hell, some kind of magical dagger that just transforms. It's such a stupid movie. This is my least favorite Jason movie. If you saw my ranking, you know that, and... The only thing that puts her above Rennie is the fact that she doesn't have those stupid dream sequences. <laughs> Other than that, I don't know what to say about her. There's nothing to say. Like, she is the niece of Jason. She barely has any confrontations with Jason. And that's it. She sneaks up on him and stabs him. There's not much personality. She has a child, so I'm kind of rooting for her because she's a mother. I want her to be able to be with her kid. So that kind of helps me root for her in a way. But she's married to this asshole, this self-serving piece of shit, who ends up becoming like Jason at one point. Yeah, I just, not much to say about Jessica. She's just in a terrible movie. So, moving on. Number nine will go to Whitney from the Friday the 13th reboot. She's probably one of the most forgettable final girls next to Rennie. Because she disappears for a good portion in the movie. Because of the story they're going for. Uh, she's in the opening, like, 20 minutes. She's got this boyfriend. She's very attractive. She's one of the most gorgeous final girls in the franchise. Probably one of the most better active final girls in the franchise, if I'm being honest. But, in the end, she doesn't really get to do a whole lot against Jason. She borrows tricks from Jenny's playbook. She does the whole mother's talking to you thing. It's not like 
she came up with that. She's just stealing from Jenny, so I can't give her too many points for that because that's just something that was already done before. And she has that stupid corny one-liner right before she kills Jason, like, go to hell with mommy or something. She, go to hell. Like, I'm always fucking up that line. What is it? Like, say hi to mommy in hell. There it is. That's a dumb line, but yeah, like, not a whole lot of personality to her. She's just a hostage throughout most of the flick, so she's not a very good final girl. She doesn't fight back that much. There's not a whole lot of bravery or great decisions on her part. We don't get to know her that well. She's got a sick mom. That's all I really know. She's got a cool brother. That's the most badass character in this movie. That's the one I'm rooting for, not Whitney. So yeah, there you go. Whitney at number nine. Number eight will go to the original final girl in this franchise, and that is Alice. Now, unlike most final girls, usually they're, you know, virgins and they don't do drugs. This one, however, is clearly banging Steve and smoking pot, playing strip Monopoly. She's not your typical final girl. But she's just the one that makes it because she just made it. Like, she, she just got lucky. She doesn't fight back too much. She But she fights back more than the people below. She actually has more of a confrontation with Pamela Voorhees. She's hitting her over the head with the frying pan and she hits her with like a gun right in the crotch. She's doing that stupid like five minutes what it feels like, like blockading the door, putting the couch up against the door and trying to like tie a knot with the rope around like the doorknob, trying to secure it, but doing it poorly. <laughs> she, She's not the best at blocking doors but overall, she's more of just like a shrieking violet. She's just finding bodies and screaming and getting her ass kicked by Pamela. So, but because she fights back a little bit more than the people below, and she's the one that, you know, started it all, she's the first final girl, I'm going to give her this slot right here above the rest at number eight. Number seven goes to Pam. Hello, Pam. The uh, first notable thing about Pam is her awful scream. I don't like her scream. And she has a magical sweater that just keeps leaving her body and coming back on when she's running through the woods. And there's a moment when she trips and she can't get up. She's like that stupid senior citizen commercial. I've fallen and I can't get up. She needs one of those buttons because she seriously cannot get up. I don't know if it's because of the heels that she's wearing. She's wearing like these boots with like these big heels on them. Some kind of shoes that you wouldn't want to wear when running away from a serial killer that's for sure but she does fight back with a chainsaw that was pretty cool and then when the chainsaw can't start it like runs out of gas she throws it at him smart decision she's trying to save reggie she's trying to rescue not just herself but him so she's not selfish so that puts her high up and she's adorable. She works at this place trying to help kids. She's a nice human being. So she deserves to be high up for that alone. And she's the only final girl in this franchise whose tits we see. That's a fact. Number six will go to Rowan and Jason X. She is pretty badass in the opening. This is where she's her strongest. And she prevents Jason from killing for centuries. If it wasn't for her, he would have killed many more people before Earth eventually killed itself. Like, it, you know, in the movie, Earth is completely destroyed, so I guess it didn't matter what she did. Everyone was going to die anyways, Jason or no Jason. But she froze his ass quick. First act, first ten minutes of the movie, she kills Jason, so to speak, for centuries. So no one else on this list can say that. She can. She's adorable looking. She's... Got a mean punch when she wakes up and punches that stupid pervy doctor right in his face. And one thing I realized is that she's kind of like the new Ralph. She's the one like, hey, you're all doomed. I know what we're up against and you don't. So I liked that she was kind of like a leader. They all looked up to her, came to her like, how do we fight this guy? So she's a pretty badass final girl. Doesn't get enough attention. So that's why she's all the way up here at number six. Number five will go to Tina in Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. Now, she is technically the most powerful final girl. But it's because she's too powerful that it's just a little unfair to the other ones that I don't want to put her at number one just because she's the most powerful. She doesn't really have a whole lot of personality. She's not 
the best active final girl in this franchise. She mainly just cries a lot throughout the whole movie. She's just whining and trying to leave. And she's just kind of a bitch to her love interest in the movie right away. I, mean, I thought that was a little uncalled for. He was just trying to help. And I don't really care about their relationship either. She's just not really an interesting character. She just kind of stares at things and they move. Not really a whole lot there. Not a whole lot of background to this person. She's not that much of a badass. She just has a power that helps her have a giant advantage over Jason and every other final girl on this list. But her powers are, are also inconsistent. Like she has visions of things that already happened and then she has visions of things that are going to happen. And then they, he ne she never has one again. She just has two visions in the whole movie. I thought that was odd. Like why didn't they just keep using that? They only used it twice. It was just inconsistent. And another notable thing is that she's the one that causes all the carnage here in this movie. She's the one that resurrects Jason, so to speak. She releases him from the water, breaks the chain, and frees him to go kill everybody next door. So it's her fault for releasing him. So I gotta knock points off for that. And she technically doesn't defeat Jason despite how strong she is. Her dead daddy does. So she couldn't even do it herself. Somebody had to come from beyond the grave to help her out. So Tina is at number five. Number four will go to Chris. She fights back a hell of a lot more than some of the people, maybe even above her. She fights back a hell of a lot and she makes some really good decisions, but I can't stand her rape story. That pisses me off every time I see it. It doesn't make sense. That's not Jason's character. And I don't like her delivery in that scene because her, her acting and I'm a fan of her character and her taste in men even she's dating what Rick this guy looks like he's like 10 15 years older than her and he's being an asshole to her the whole time and she just can't see that he's not right for her <laughs> I'm like diving really deep into this now I'm like you deserve better Chris and outside her terrible taste in men she also loses her sanity at the end of this movie when she has that awful final scare dream sequence that annoys the hell out of me, she is completely gone in her mind. She's mentally disturbed. She will never be the same again when she's like cackling, laughing her ass off in the back of that police cruiser. So she's the only final girl in this list that loses her mind literally. So have to knock points off for that. But I love how much she fights back with like the fire log. She hangs the bastard. She axes him in the face. So had to put her high up for how much she fights back and some of her smart decision making in this final act. But she had to lose some points because of her craziness and her rape story. So Chris, you're going to sit right here at number four. Number three will go to Megan, Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. I think she's the most fun, energetic, charming final girl of them all. And she, I just love her chemistry with Tommy Jarvis, how just willing she is to help this guy who she barely knows. She's a team player and she's just very fun. She's very like rebellious against her dad. She just feels the most like a young, you know, teenage girl, young adult. She just is so full of life. And then she even saves a life at the end. She gives Tommy Jarvis CPR. She's a lifesaver, literally. And she even defeats Jason. She goes out there risking her life to get Tommy back to shore and then smartly starts the boat and then starts chopping at Jason's face. So she fights back a decent amount here. And I just really like her personality. She's got the best personality out of all these final girls. So have to put Megan up here at number three. Number two, number one, switch. But I have to be honest with myself. Number two will be... Trish. Now, I love this movie, love this Jason, so part of me wants to put her at number one because of just how much I love this movie, but she is not the best final girl, but she does fight back a hell of a lot. But there's just one thing about her that is so idiotic that I had to put her at two instead of one, and that is her inability of jumping over dead bodies. What the hell is up with that? I don't get it. It's ridiculous. Does she think it's bad luck to jump over a dead body even when you're being chased by a serial killer? She would rather break the window 
and give Jason more time to catch up with her, which surprisingly he doesn't, which makes no sense at all. And then she's trying to like nail the door shut as if that's going to do jack shit. He can just break through the window. Oh wait, he does. Breaks right through the window, starts attacking her brother. But I like how much she's trying to help her brother, just like Pam with Reggie. I like her relationship with her son, her trying to fight with her brother and save him and just their fight for survival, their duo. Really like them in this final chase and how much she's willing to do to save her brother. Like she runs across the street and distracts Jason and says like, leave Tommy, I'll lure him over here, you just go. But of course he doesn't. And I love that she jumps right through that window like, fuck this, I'm out. But another thing I just love about her is how much of a fight she puts up with Jason. When he's trying to get her on the ground, she's not taking it. She's kicking and screaming and she's like, I'll give you something to remember this family by. She's chopping his hand wide open, smacking him in the chest with that machete. She's swinging it, like just like, stay the fuck back. I love Trish, she's just an awesome final girl. She's gorgeous. And unlike Chris, she doesn't lose her sanity at the end. So Trish is right here at number two. But number one will go to Jenny for obvious reasons. She really fights back quite a bit. She makes a lot of good decisions. She gets lucky a couple of times because of how crappy this Jason is, in my opinion. How clumsy he is, falling off the chair, breaking the pitchfork, stabbing the pitchfork on the passenger side, as opposed to the driver's side where her head is at. I still don't understand that scene but she gets that chainsaw, she's fighting back, she picks up a chair, smashes it over his head, and then runs to the shack, puts on the sweater, and uses that child psychology that she's trying to major in. So she's a very smart final girl. She's also one of the only final girls that seems to sympathize with Jason when she's at the bar talking about him, about how he might be a, some lost, uh, scared, frightened retard, as she says. But there's a couple of things I will knock about her. A couple of things I don't like is the fact that she watches Paul get his ass kicked like twice. Once when they first get there, Paul, there's someone in this room. And then later on when he's like trying to save her, she kind of like watches them struggle for quite a bit before finally picking up the machete and chopping at his shoulder. Why the shoulder? Why? Why the shoulder? It's, it's a trope. It's in every freaking slasher. Go for the head, Jenny. Go for the head. Like Trish. Although she only smacked the mask off. But she still tried, at least, for the head. Not you. <laughs> so, that always irritates me. But yeah, Jenny, she's very smart. She runs around the corner. She hides in the bush. She waits for him to come around. So she kicks him right in the balls. But for some reason, she's very scared of rats. Uh, I always find that to be really dumb, too. Like, really? Like, getting chased by a serial killer doesn't make you piss your pants. But when a rat comes near you, that's where... It becomes too much for you to handle and you just start pissing yourself. That's silly, but she's a very, very, very smart final girl. And she's a lot of people's favorites, so I won't be shocked if you say she's your favorite too. But yeah, Jenny, number one, best final girl. What's your list? Put it in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you like what you've seen here, I really appreciate it. You hit that like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, Alpha Feeders. Eve.